Hello, and welcome back to the Self Healer Soundboard. Today's episode, we're going to talk about personal responsibility, which I know for many of us is both a foundational and very difficult aspect of our healing journeys. Taking personal responsibility really is what gives you empowerment in life and on your healing journeys. And it also happens to be something that is so commonly challenging for many of us. We'd much rather be kind of at a whim or a victim to our circumstances and allow the world to happen to us than realizing that as fully functioning adults, we are responsible for how we're co-creating in the world around us and how we choose to respond or react. Really, really great point to start with, Jenna, because the large majority of us out there and probably many of you listening do feel very much like a victim to your environment or like you're just reacting to the world around you, probably because you are. So many of us are living from that autopilot where we don't even really make choices for ourselves throughout the day. We just go about life as we know it, day in and day out, pretty much looks the same. And when we're not showing up and making choices, we do slip into reactivity. The same events cause the same reactions, and we actually don't feel like we have choice at all. We become reactive, we become powerless, and we feel very, very disempowered. And while those feelings are incredibly valid, the experience of blaming someone else or blaming your past or blaming your circumstances or the conditions of your life for how your life is or how you are showing up only leaves you in a disempowered state. It actually allows you to then suffer and not fulfill your highest self or your highest life or destiny. So to be clear, most of what we're talking about, all of these habits and all of the patterns that live in our subconscious came from somewhere, typically our past, experiences that we've had. It's not that we were responsible for what happened back when, whenever it happened. What we are now responsible for is the impact that that past continues to have on us today. Because even for those of us who are maybe even decades you know, into the future from where very painful events happened, we're still carrying that with us, that past. And again, it's still shifting. It's stored in our autopilot and it becomes those reactions from which we're living even decades later. And I know that this often can sound easier said than done. You know, we don't know each of your personal histories and your personal journeys. And I speak from my own personal experience growing up with a single mom who had three kids under the age of three with an alcoholic husband who became addicted to painkillers. My mother struggled with addiction herself, worked multiple jobs, leaving us at home, neglected, not getting the love and nurturing we needed. So she quite literally could just provide shelter for us. Now, it's not a story of pity or blame in any way. It, however, is exactly what I needed to experience in my life firsthand to understand that self-reliance and personal responsibility. Because for many years, I know I did feel at a victim to everything that happened to me. You know, all of the friends around me had parents that were paying for college or paying for weddings or who would just have family dinners at night. And I very much struggled. I struggled financially. I struggled with where I was going, with the direction in life. And for a long time, I I was very resentful and very much blamed my past and my circumstances on where I was now as a 20-something in present day. And in that state, while it's not wrong, it left me as a victim. It left me incredibly disempowered in that autopilot, just going through the same motions and the same cycle. And it wasn't until I chose to actually take personal responsibility and honor the fact that No, I'm not responsible for the things that happened to me as a child. However, now as a fully functioning adult, I am 100% responsible for how I respond and react to the world around me and how I choose to view those experiences and the lessons I learned from them as a child. And I think what you're really illustrating, Jenna, is, you know, regardless of the background that we came from, again, regardless of blame, this isn't a conversation around who was responsible. This is a conversation now around what impact does that past continue to have in my life? And for me, I began to see very clearly how my past experiences, which were much different than your own, continued to color my current day-to-day happenings. What I mean when I say that is, I began to notice in myself the filters, the stories that I would tell myself 
about events that were happening around me. Because the reality, and this is a tough one for a lot of us, is we're not actually reacting to not getting a text back from our partner. What we're actually reacting to is the story that we've created around why we didn't get that text back or what may or may not be happening. And again, those stories come from some place. And when we then filter that experience, a lack of response through my most visited story is how I'm not considered. Now, when I see the lack of response as a reflection of my not feeling considered, and those of you who know my past experiences know for me, that was a predominant feeling in my childhood. Having a family who was otherwise distracted with their own stress left me feeling largely not considered. So it's not surprising then that that became my filter. I use that as an example to illustrate it's not really what's happening to us or around us. It's the filter. That's how we're carrying our past with us. And then, of course, we're creating that whole emotional experience in our, our current body. A powerful and simple way to begin taking that responsibility, to begin empowering yourself, is by simply saying, this is what I've chosen for myself and my life up until now. Because whether we want to believe it or accept it or not, as adults, our circumstances around us, the life around us, yes, outside forces do impact us. However, we are active co-creators of that life. And by stating to ourselves a simple sentence of, this is what I've chosen for myself and my life up until now, allows us to practice the awareness that we are responsible. We're not out of victim to the circumstances around us, not as functioning adults. Having this awareness and taking this responsibility and really owning that you have chosen what your life is up until now gives you conscious choice to begin creating and writing the life that you do want. And so I began this, this episode by acknowledging how difficult it is. And I will share personally from my own journey how difficult it was for me to even shift into acknowledging that I was making choices. My life was so habitual, um, the way I cared for my body, to these personality traits. I was the quintessential stressed out human. That's all I knew was stress. I had all of these stories that I told myself with very rational, realistic causes, my genetics, my family. I see the similar traits in my mom, my sister. I had all of these reasons to believe that I didn't have control. And I would actually fight um, Lolly at the time, who was my reminder that I have choice because we do now know that even when we're talking about our physical body and how well we are or what symptoms we're experiencing, we now know through the science of epigenetics that even in those areas, we get choice. So even if we're struggling with anxiety like our mom might be or depression like our dad might be, it, it's not necessarily because genetically we're powerless. Genetically, we have the gene for whatever the disorder is. So ultimately, that means we get that. We now know that that isn't even true. Yet I would have fought tooth and nail at the beginning of my journey for all of those limitations for myself. Because again, I was so on my spaceship, so living from autopilot, I actually didn't even see the opportunity to make choices until I became conscious. So we keep revisiting this concept of empowerment and of choice that really begins, as you and I talk often about, when we become conscious, when we begin to witness exactly what Jenna and I are talking about here, the autopilot that we're living, the choices you might not even be aware that you're making day in or day out that are causing, again, the circumstances around you to continue. And with that consciousness first as your foundation, you then have to actually ask yourself, Am I willing to take responsibility for my life? You know, maybe I'm deeply in debt or I'm living in poverty or I'm suffering in an abusive relationship. Am I willing to take responsibility for those circumstances? You first do have to have that foundation of consciousness to even begin asking yourself these authentic questions and then choosing whether or not you do want to take responsibility for it. That again, while we are not responsible if we are being violated, if our boundaries are being crossed. When we become conscious that we can be now an active participant in what's happening, that then allows us choice. In that moment, we may make the choice to stay in this current circumstances, or it gifts us now with the possibility to change 
them. So what is personal responsibility? Personal responsibility is simply becoming conscious to the reality that we can create choice in our life. Something I want to note here is that personal responsibility isn't a moral thing. It's not good if you take it. It's not bad if you take it. It simply is up to your free will. Choosing to take personal responsibility for yourself and your life is empowering. It gives you free choice to then actively and consciously co-create and design the life around you. Choosing to not take personal responsibility is also a choice. There's nothing wrong with that. However, it does leave you in a disempowered state, which means it leaves you at a whim of life happening to you, the relationships happening to you around you, instead of you being an active participant. And what it ends up then resulting in is that repetition of the past. Um, taking personal responsibility, should you choose, is for many of us the pathway out, the way that we begin to create a future that begins to, over time, very slowly, of course, look a little different from that past. And personal responsibility isn't something that, you know, is necessarily easy breezy. You can choose to take it. Yes, there is an active moment when you choose to actually genuinely take personal responsibility. And it's a bit of a challenge for many of us to get there. I know it took me well up until probably my late 20s till I really wanted to dive into an active healing journey. I wanted to become responsible quite frankly, because I was sick and tired of being a victim of the past. I barely graduated high school because I was too consumed with getting drunk in the parking lot because I couldn't cope with the chaos and the abuse and dysfunction that was happening at home. Now, all of those things sort of set life off into a chaotic turn of events. And I had all of the excuses in the book. You know, I could blame it on the past. It was a neglectful environment. It was an abusive environment. And I saw myself struggle continuously throughout my 20s, getting fired from jobs that I loved, not because I wasn't qualified, but because I wouldn't show up. I would self-sabotage in so many ways. So if you haven't listened to our self-sabotage episode that came out last week, I also highly recommend that you do that because self-sabotage is another form of not taking personal responsibility, not taking ownership of yourself and your life. And it really was a powerful moment for me where I just decided I actually want a different life. I want to choose. I want to create a life that I'm designing instead of being a victim from the past because really I got sick of it. And for many of us, that is often how we will get to a place of taking ownership for our lives and taking personal responsibility is when we're so beaten down at the bottom of the barrel that we really have nowhere else to go but up. So I think everyone's point of entry into when we begin to take personal responsibility looks different, though I, I think it's safe to say for all of us, it definitely isn't that light switch that we're all looking for. We don't decide we're going to show up consciously and make choices for ourselves and then begin to do that always into the future forevermore. Absolutely not. I'll speak from my own journey. There's still moments where my old conditioning comes back up, where I would prefer not to be the one responsible, where I would prefer the world around me to look and be different so that I could feel and exist in it more comfortably. There are still moments where when I'm tired, when I'm stressed, I still have that tendency to fall back into that same powerlessness that I began my journey. So as all things, it's not linear. There's no light switch. There's definitely going to be moments where it feels really really difficult or we just downright don't want to show up in that choice that we are granting ourselves each and every day. Though, reminding ourselves that each new moment does give ourselves that opportunity. Regardless of how old you are listening to this podcast right now, it is never too late to change. Everything we're talking about, this conscious awareness that allows us the ability to create choice and empower ourselves in this personally responsible way is always available to you. Personal responsibility is also not an opportunity to beat yourselves up or to judge yourself for the past. You really need to cultivate and give yourself compassion and self-love and kindness. As we're saying, it is a conscious choice every single day. You're going to have ups. You're going to have downs. Even just last week, we were in New York visiting family, and there are a lot of moments with my family that coming back, I get reactive, my resources are low, and it's very easy for me to blame the circumstances over there that still 
are really sometimes difficult for me to see or witness or experience. And I could easily just blame, oh, I'm going to push my partners away and I'm going to snap at them today because of what I just had to deal with and see back home. And in those moments, I'm very human. I very much still have them. And it's another opportunity where I have to realize I'm not a victim of my past anymore. I am an adult. I do have the responsibility to myself and to those around me to really take ownership for, yes, that's the experience that's happening over there. And I am fully responsible for how I respond to that experience over here in my own life. And we share these personal examples with you guys really to acknowledge that we know it isn't easy. And for many of you, it may feel really difficult, especially if you do have a past you know, being raised by someone who is poorly informed or who had bad or addictive habits. We do understand that there is suffering, that there is hardship that people endure. So taking responsibility could very easily kind of, you know, you could scoff at it, like, you know, easier said than done, easier for you. You don't know my history. So we share ours to give and really shine a light for you to maybe see yourselves and also see that the opportunity and the ownership of taking personal responsibility is you granting your own self freedom and empowerment to actually begin living and creating the life that you want. Compassion is a word that we revisit often, whether or not we're acknowledging and cultivating compassion for ourselves or for our loved ones and all of the hurt that has occurred, again, based on past, on past pain, on past wounding, on continuing to live very reactively in that autopilot, a lot of us have caused hurt. So for many of us, practicing that daily compassion is part of the journey. We actually recorded an episode, I think it was two episodes ago now, on self-love. Um, again, exploring why for so many of us it is difficult to have that compassion that we're talking about, and of course, giving tips and tools with how to begin to foster it in ourselves. So if you have not listened to those already, or if you want to review them, the what is self-love and what is self-sabotage episodes, those are two separate episodes that really play into what we're talking about here with personal responsibility. A foundation of self-love and understanding what self-sabotage is and why we do it are going to be very powerful concepts in helping you understand what personal responsibility is and then also how to take it. We actually chose today's topic on personal responsibility based on your feedback. There were a couple of people in the community who really resonated with how we touched on personal responsibility in that self-love episode. So thank you for giving that feedback. I know we've given you a lot to digest here. We are always listening to your feedback. What topics do you guys want to hear from us? So we'll keep this conversation going. Feel free to send us DMs or responses on social media. And also, we would love and greatly appreciate if you are resonating with this podcast or you want to let us know what you do like about it or what you want to hear more of, please head over to Apple and leave us a review. Looking forward to seeing you next time on the Self Healer Soundboard.